Welcome back to the Hot 7 Nightly News. Thank you for staying with us. Denry North MP Sean Edward is questioning why in a $1.5 billion budget, allocations were not made to cater to reinstating social programs and addressing primary health care deficiencies. Denry North MP Sean Edwards says he's struggling to reconcile the pronouncements about the strength of the economy versus the plight of citizens across various sectors, as he debated the figures presented in the estimates of revenue and expenditure for 2019-2020. He questioned why, if the economy is on the rebound, did the government not reinstate the distress fund? Every year in St. Lucia, there is somebody who struggles to put 10 sheets of plywood together and call it a home. And you should never look down on them, you know, because they, of the amount of sweat it took to construct those two by four homes and the amount of pride that resides in there. And Mr. Speaker, sometimes to no fault of theirs, they are at work and they get a call, that distressing call, that the little plywood structure has gone up in flames and you cannot find $400,000 to reinstate a distress fund. You cannot find $400 million, $400 mil dollar, to make a budget of $1.5 billion. Pour les moun kayo kay bili. Mais quand nous avons la nuit en cette mission, je ne sais pas, Mr. Speaker, c'est pourquoi il a pour vous vieux fort. Mon Dieu, vous avez sa belle pour chouval, vous avez une belle. Je ne sais pas, il y a un autre moins plus. The MP, like other opposition MPs, questioned the decision-making of the administration and budget allocations to the health care sector in particular. Edward was especially concerned about the delay in reinstatement of the La Richus Health Center that was affected by fire. We have savings. We have surplus. The reserves are at the best. We have $200,000 for the health center health center La Richus. And it pains me, not just as a parliamentary rep, but as a resident of the community, when I can see elderly people like Miss Eldrian Tabel have to walk from Richford to their homes or take a bus. You know why? Because the services that were usually available to them at La Resource, they have to go all the way to Richford to source that. And I've made the point here before that the doctors and the health professionals at Richford are overwhelmed. Research has shown that a district medical officer, where best practice is concerned, will see 15 to 20 people. Mr. Speaker, by 7.30, you have at least 60 to 70 people at the Richmond Health Center lining up to see a doctor. And when the crowd builds up, doctors from all the parts of the country have to be deployed to help with the congestion. And we're doing that at a time when the reserves are the best. We're doing that at a time when the savings have been at their best. We're doing that at a time when the economy is supposed to be at its best. We're doing that at a time when we're supposed to have the best quote-unquote Prime Minister St. Lucia has ever seen. The opposition argues that primary health care services, which are made up of health centers, are lacking government support and in some cases suffer outright neglect. These were the pronouncements made in the throne speech about primary health care. Quote, in improving the supply of primary health care services, my government intends to address the need for facilities throughout St. Lucia to be resilient in the face of climate events. Moreover, selected health facilities will be upgraded to smart institutions so that they are adaptable to changing weather patterns, safe and operational during and after extreme weather events. End quote. The PRO of the Grosely Minibus Owners Association, Thomas St. Louis, is rubbishing comments made by Inspector of Police in charge of the Traffic Department, Benson de Turville, in relation to the Windward Island Gases Bypass. De Turville, in an interview with Hot 7 News, indicated that a closed-off section is not part of the minibus driver's route. St. Louis says this is laughable. We've been having a lot of controversy based on the fact that uh, they're trying to decide if the bypass, which is the island gases route, is part of the Grosely route. Let me just inform the public that the bypass road, we call it the island gases route, it has been a part of our route for years. Also, uh, the Windjammer, inside of Windjammer is part of our route. Uh, going to Cap Estate is part of our route. 
um, uh, going to Pigeon Island is part of our route. And at one time, even Borseju was part of our route. Okay, so if it's not part of our route, I wonder the, the authorities to come out and tell us the island gases. We're not talking about Grand Riviere. We're talking about the bypass that goes through island gases. We would like them to clarify the fact that if it's not our, part of our route, we've, we've been serving that route for the past 15 to 20 years. Whose route is it? Because it was established a couple of years ago that we would be passing in there and it wasn't a problem. So why is now, after 15 to 20 years, it becomes not a part of our route? The minibus operators are not allowed to use the bypass during the morning peak hours of 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. as part of a traffic improvement pilot project. The chairman of the St. Lucia Fire Service Association, Shane Felix, says firefighters are anxiously awaiting a response from the government's negotiating team, GNT, following the completed process of them justifying their fringe benefits and demands for better working conditions. More in this report from Solange Alfred. This is one blaze that is showing no sign of being ousted. The chairman of the St. Lucia Fire Service Association says only due attention to the plight and demands of members will do. The St. Lucia Fire Service Association has laid out the reasons behind its demands for fringe benefits and proper working conditions. Chairman of the SLFA, Shane Felix, says now that the justification process is completed, it becomes a waiting game. All of our articles were discussed at our last meeting. We are now just waiting on the government negotiating team to respond on those justifications as to what has been approved, what has been disagreed and so on and for us to be able to report back to fire officers as to uh, what sort of responses it is that we've gotten from the government negotiating team. Felix highlights that some issues do not warrant the input of the oversight committee. However, that opinion, according to him, is not shared by the government. All of those things are still pending and we have not gotten much response except that the government seems to not agree with what it is that the association said that some of those things can be dealt with outside of the oversight committee but they're saying that they want all of those things to be dealt with under that committee and um, for the association to have a representative on that committee and to proceed forward. He says firefighting personnel stand in solidarity as they await the response from the government negotiating team. Members are very much eager to know what is happening. Um, the questions are very frequent. Um, what's the latest on negotiations? Um, what sort of feedback did the um, government negotiating team give and so on. Um, there is the focus again on the regrading or reclassification, as some persons call it, um, for fire officers. Um, as much as this is not on the table with the government negotiating team, but something that the cabinet of ministers have, have proposed to deal with under the oversight committee, which was proposed by uh, the prime minister, Whilst the men and women of the SLFA await a response from the GNT, the chairman of the SLFA says he will continue to vocalize the many injustices plaguing the fire service department in hopes of speedy resolve. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Sola Jalford. Well-known driving instructor Toma Francis is weighing in on the effort by law enforcement to clamp down on the use of super bright headlights. Police say although the motor vehicle and road traffic regulations do not speak to the intensity of lumens allowed to be installed, this does not mean that motorists cannot make the determination for themselves as to what is safe and what is not. The traffic department says the issue is becoming extremely problematic. And not just the bright lights, the, color, the, the, the different colors of lights. It's very dangerous because... Um, I, I'll tell you something. One day I was coming, I was going up, I was going up the road to Grosile by Wyndham, um, which is St. James at this present time. And a vehicle coming down with a different color light. It was, uh, uh, in fact, I just could not, I couldn't even identify the light. It was looking purple or blue. And it was very dangerous. I, I could not have seen them. And it's when I reached, when I approached them, just in the bottleneck, and then I realized it was a vehicle coming. I think what should happen, the police, the police, the police department, should pull those vehicles off the road because anybody that does not comply with the rules and regulations of the law and they have the vehicle on the road, you can, you can charge them for um, or, um, v v a vehicle which is 
um, how, you, um, how you call the word, they say it is not, um, unworthy. That was driving instructor Tom Francis. Strict guidelines are being outlined by the Department of Fisheries in regards to the closed season of particular fish and crustaceans. The department is expressing a need for a more informed public on all things marine life. Fresh, mouth-watering seafood is an island favorite. From sautéed shrimps to grilled barracuda, island life offers an abundance of choices when it comes to seafood treats. However, according to Information and Communication Officer in the Department of Fisheries, Yvonne Edwin, she says one delicacy should be off menus and plates for a while, as the season remains closed from the 1st of March to the 1st of August. Currently, the Department of Fisheries would like to advise that the lobster fishery is currently closed. It will remain closed and has been closed from the 1st of March and will remain so until the 1st of August. During the closed period, no establishment, person, fisher should have lobsters in their possession and that includes having them in your freezer even though you may have purchased it during the open season. So no one should have lobsters in their possession for sale, for purchase or for consumption and that includes advertising on your menu. The Fisheries Act 7.15 indicates that possession of lobsters during the closed period and that is the 1st of March to the 1st of August that is prohibited and no one should have in their possession storage in a freezer in a lobster pot no one should be in possession of lobsters when the season is closed irrespective that you may have purchased those lobsters during the open period it is advised that you do not utilize those lobsters you inform the department and they will be sealed until the season is open Furthermore, she added that beachgoers should remain vigilant during this season for the presence of nesting turtles. Sea turtle nesting season takes place from March through November, and during this time, individuals can witness female turtles laying their eggs or baby turtles emerging and making their way to the ocean. We want to remind persons that the turtle nesting season is actually on. So you will find a lot of turtles coming up to nest along our West Coast beaches in particular. And so we want persons to be mindful that these nesting turtles, they need to be protected. If you do encounter a sea turtle activity, we advise that you inform the Department of Fisheries of anything that you see regarding nesting turtles. Meanwhile, Edwin went on to put a call out to commercial boat owners for the renewal of their license. Owners of any commercial fishing vessel, we would also like to remind you that vessel licenses have expired and the current period within which you should have a license for April 1st to the 30th of March 2020. These licenses are up for renewal and we request that all vessel owners come to the department or make contact with the extension officers to get their license, their vessels inspected and to ensure that they have a license for the current period. Under the Fisheries Legislation of St. Lucia, Part 3, general licensing provision, it states, quote, It shall be a condition of the license that a copy of the license shall be carried on board any licensed fishing vessel and made available to any authorized officer or observer upon request, end quote. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Solange Alfred. Thank you very much, Solange. This is the Hot 7 Nightly News. Stay with us. There's much more coming up after the break.